All right, guys, so three things you must do before you invest in paper assets. Now, I think this can apply to almost any type of asset. This could probably go with real estate as well, but specifically, we're focusing on paper assets. So make sure you got a pencil, paper, write these things down. Make sure you watch all the way through because I think these three things are crucial when it comes to investing in paper assets. So let's get into them. Number one, you need to maintain a list of paper assets that you're interested in buying, right? A lot of people, when they want to invest in paper assets, they're usually investing off what somebody else said, what they read in a forum or a blog, or maybe they saw the asset being promoted on the internet, some social media platform, or maybe some celebrities talking about it or trying to promote it. And this is a good way to lose your money. I always recommend people to have a, a list of assets that they want to buy when they're ready to buy it. And in my opinion, you should have at least five assets on this list i think that's a good amount just in case one or two of the assets don't really go the direction you want it to go and you're ready to go a different direction right you have other assets on this list that you can pick from you don't just have one or two and maybe something really goes left with those companies and you don't really have any other picks now you can expand this list to to multiple right you can you can have as many paper assets as you want on this list but i would say minimum five that way you know you, you have options and preferably this list you should be keeping up with whether you know it's the new york times whether it's an, a news source article that you like but you should be keeping up with these companies on at least a weekly basis i would say daily just to be on the safe side make sure that you understand what's going on with that company but yeah this list is very important it's very important because a lot of people are again like i mentioned they're just investing on a whim they're not really thinking about what they're investing in and keeping this list is going to keep you engaged in your investments you don't want to just be on a forum you hear somebody talking about a company and you think oh i'm just going to invest in that company you do no research right so i've been doing this for four to five years and it helps me manage what i want to invest in because if you don't you're going to end up investing in anything and it's going to show whether in a big losses or you know minimal gains i would also say this list of assets needs to be spread out you don't want to have all those assets in one sector right you want it to be spread out i would say four out of the five or at least three out of the five are in different sectors this is going to help you have a diversified portfolio if you're looking to invest in multiple assets now if you're just looking to go all in on one because you're confident on the company then i mean i guess you could do that as well but i, I would prefer it to be spread out not too spread out where you're spreading yourself thin but enough you know to where your money's not tied up in, in one area so yeah i think this is the number one thing people need to do when they're investing in paper assets have a list ready to go so that way when you are ready to invest you know what you're going to invest in and a lot of people don't have this a lot of people just invest in anything they hear about and they're not doing any constant research to make sure that they're putting their money in a quality asset you hear it all the time on all these financial channels in the comments section you know what should i invest in what asset to buy and it's because people don't do the research right they want everything handed to them and they don't want to put any work in themselves so i recommend that you have a list ready to go number two you want to have a target price in which you want to purchase these assets at a lot of people just after they have their list they're like okay i'm just going to purchase this stock or i'm going to purchase this crypto without looking at the chart. Now, I'm not saying you have to be a technical analysis expert, but you should know a little bit of technical analysis before you get into paper assets. At least like know the support, like resistant levels and stuff like that, just basic stuff. So that way you can see, okay, is this stock or is this crypto, has it been on a recent run? Is this the best time to purchase it? Now, I'm not asking you to time the market. When I say a target price, I'm, I'm specifically referring to a range so let's just say you had a stock at 200 bucks and then it shot up to 300 maybe that's not the best time to purchase that stock because it just recently shot up to 300 and you don't want to go ahead and purchase it on that spike maybe you wait until it cools down to 270 260 and that range you're not looking for like a specific number but 
at least you know you're not buying it on a spike and you can average in below that spike maybe it's like i said around the 260 to 270 range so you're not buying it at the top now if you think the asset is going to go to 700 bucks then maybe it doesn't matter but you, you still need a target let's say a target range right a target price with a target range that you want to purchase that asset at right next to your asset you have the target price in which you want to get in that way when it hits that you know okay i'm going to buy in i'm going to put in whatever ten thousand bucks i'm going to put twenty thousand bucks into this position at this price and again it just helps you become way more organized when it comes to investing a lot of people they just throw their money at any price and they wonder why they're down a lot of money and again if the asset is good it will come back but the thing is, remember, a lot of people are not used to investing. So if you, for instance, let's just say Bitcoin went to 60,000 and you're like, yeah, I believe in the asset. It's going to keep going up and it might go to 100,000, right? I think it's going to go to 100,000, but you just bought it at 60,000 and then we go into a bear market and then it goes all the way to 20,000. But you're not going to be as confident in your investment now that it went from 60,000 to 20,000. Now you have to hold on to that position and wait it out in the specific situation that I'm talking about. It took three four years for bitcoin to get to forty thousand. so what that does you know setting target prices it it makes you not get turned off to the asset because if you pick a solid target price you know you're not going to take too much of the dips and you're not going to get too turned off to the investment so yeah have a target price i think that will definitely pair up nicely with your list of assets that you want to purchase all right number three number three is have a target exit price once you establish the the list of assets that you want to buy once you establish the target price you want to buy at the target range you want to know when you're going to exit the asset there's no point of buying a, an asset and you just hold on to it forever now if it's something like a real estate property and you want to hold on to it for 10 years then maybe you don't need to have a target exit price because typically real estate appreciates you know every five years so you know you're going to make money on it right but for this is specifically for paper assets for paper assets you definitely want to have a target exit price because a lot of the times people will get into an asset and it goes up it shoots up 200 percent, and they get so excited that they don't sell because they're waiting for another 200 percent, and then the asset crashes 100 percent, and you know you're you're looking back and you're saying oh wow i should have took profit i should have took the gains that i had on the table when i had them and a lot of people fall into that trap because they see the asset going so much in in value that they forget about their whole strategy so you don't want to be one of those people looking back and saying wow i had all this money on the table now i'm basically i'm almost sitting at a loss when i could have sold so you need to have a target exit price and take profit and you can always get back into the asset it's not like you sell and you can't get back into the asset a lot of people think you know oh if i sell i can't get back in i'm never going to get back in at those prices but again if you did your research and you're picking quality assets and you know you can always get back in but take profit off the table right or at least take what you put in let's just say you put in ten thousand bucks and now the ten thousand dollars is thirty five thousand you take the initial 10 that you put in and you leave 15 so now it's easier to hold on to that position for longer because you already took out the initial amount that you put in right yeah you took out the ten thousand that you put in initially and now you're really you really don't care what the investment does i wouldn't say you really don't care what the investment does but at least you secured your initial investment and you know at least you're not going to lose that and you still got a whole fifteen thousand in the investment so if it doubled and tripled from there you won't lose out on that but at least you secured your initial investment and that's what people need to learn how to do take profit off the table and you do this with target exit prices it helps you hold on to that quality asset longer but yeah those are the three things that you must do in my opinion when you're you're going to purchase paper assets one you need to have a list of assets you want to buy a lot of people don't know what they want to invest in because they never did the research having this list is going to make you ready for when the time comes to purchase these assets number two you want to have a target price in which you want to get into the asset now again i'm not saying to time the market but you don't want to get in on a super spike and then take a, a immediate super loss and then you get Get turned off to the asset and then number three have a target exit price you're not getting in the asset for nothing you want to make gains so it makes sense to have a target exit price so you know when you're going to get out and take some profit but yeah that's the video if you guys like the video please like comment and subscribe and make sure to always take care of your financial nutrition